What's up everyone, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and today we are back with another video and for the video today I wanted to go over something that I've been getting a ton of questions in my DMs about and that is what are the specs of my new computer, how do I back up my computers, and generally just kind of give a rundown of what I'm using. So in today's video we're going to talk about my new computer build, what I put in there, why I chose some of the elements and specs that I did, and then I want to talk a little bit about kind of how I divide up my hard drives and how I use some of my backup systems because as you may or may not know in November I did have a computer crash and while it sucked that I was out of work for a couple weeks it was even better that I didn't lose any files I didn't lose any session work I didn't lose any backup projects that I had it could have been really really catastrophic I could have lost four years and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of projects however it was all totally fine so in the video today we'll go over that and I'll just kind of let you know what I'm working with in terms of my computer so without further ado let's actually chat about what's going on in my new system all right so to start off my new computer is a PC I've always been PC for audio we've got Macs that we do some of the video stuff on but I just really prefer working on PC just a personal preference thing I like being able to upgrade really easily and so this is a custom built PC that I had built by a shop in Orlando and I am running Windows 10 I tend to not upgrade to new OS systems until everything is sustainable on that so I'll probably stay on 10 for like six months to a year and then maybe switch to Windows 11 but right now I'm running on a custom PC with Windows 10. The first thing we should probably dive into is what processor I chose so I'm working with an Intel i9 11900k um, it's basically the i9 is the top Intel series and I'm on the 11th generation I think they're up to the 12th generation now but with crypto and um, all of the NFTs and stuff like that computer parts are super hard to find and they're super expensive so 12th generation i9s are almost impossible so I figured I would just go with the Intel i9 uh, 11th generation and you'll see some of the specs that will kind of pop up on the screen so if you're into computers you'll be able to see all of that and if you're not um, which I'm not very handy with computers just know that it is an Intel i9 and then one of the newest generations if you're building your own production computer or you're trying to buy one keep in mind that your processor is going to be a huge area that you should spend some of that money in uh, getting an upgraded processor will help you open sessions faster it'll help you be able to do more things at one time there's a couple key components that when anybody's building a production computer I say to keep in mind number one would be the processor and number two is going to be the RAM so the RAM will be the next thing that we talk about and RAM is basically uh, short-term memory that your computer is going to use to do things like pull up uh, like libraries pull up new VSTs stuff like that so if you're pulling up you know contact instruments and Omnisphere instruments you're gonna run out of that processing power and that RAM pretty quickly so with that said for the new computer I've put in 64 gigabytes of RAM of DDR4 RAM and I'm able to expand that up to 128 so I'm gonna play around with this for a couple months and see if I need to expand it but if so I can go all the way up to 128 gigs of RAM however right now I'm just at 64 for storage on this computer, I just have a one terabyte Samsung 980 Pro. It's an SSD that just slides right in and it's super fast, it's really easy. And really the only things that I'll store on the actual computer itself are like the programs, program files, um, and then maybe some like small little files and stuff like that. But we'll talk about it a little bit later. I like to just go with a pretty small, um, easy kind of hard drive system inside of a computer so things don't get mixed up. And then I like to run most everything else from external drives, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But just know in this computer, I'm running a one terabyte SSD and I believe it's the Samsung 980 uh, Pro. The next thing we can talk about is the graphics card. So I mainly only do audio on this computer. I'm not a big gamer. I don't do any of the video editing on this. So I chose to opt for a pretty simple graphics card. I didn't want to use integrated graphics because some plugins will have kind of updated GUIs and you'll run into some issues with integrated graphics. However, I did just want to put in something pretty simple. So I am going with an MSI GeForce. I believe it's a 1650 or 1650X. It's a four gigabyte GPU, which is nothing insane. Like I probably can't go play Fortnite in 4K or anything like that on it. However, for me to just operate my DAW, do some basic screen recordings and live castings, this is more than enough. And right now GPUs are just so expensive. So if you're looking to build a computer for audio, a graphics card is probably the best spot to try to save some money because again right now with crypto mining and nfts and blockchain and everything like that gpus are insanely expensive i think the one that i put in here was like 150 dollars a year and a half ago and now they're going for like four or five hundred so if you are building a computer just for audio 
put a graphics card in, but go with something pretty simple because this is not gonna be a super big performance issue for you. The next thing that we'll talk about is the motherboard. If you're not familiar with PCs, a motherboard is basically what's gonna hold all of the components. So it's what holds the processor, it's what holds the RAM, it's what holds the hard drives, and it's what gives you your ports on the back. So having a motherboard that I can expand and that has the right ports was a big thing for me. So I wanted to make sure that I put in something that was decent and we could expand storage and expand RAM. So I decided to put in the Asus Tough Gaming uh, Z490. It's a pretty solid motherboard. You can see some of the ports and some of the B-roll that we'll have roll right here. So it's mainly working off of USB 3 and it's got some USB super speed ports and it does have a Thunderbolt connection. So if I do want to use a Thunderbolt interface or a Thunderbolt um, device or something like that, I do have that and I can expand that with extra Thunderbolt cards in the back. And the reason I like this motherboard too is right now I do only have that one one terabyte SSD. However, I can put two more hard drives in this so I can have up to three hard drives, up to 128 gigs of RAM. And if I even wanted to, I could pop in another graphics card and have dual graphics cards working. So this gives me a ton of expandability. And as you can see with the case, it's just this big kind of glass panel, which we'll talk about in one second, but it's super easy for me to upgrade anything or take it into the local shop and have them upgrade. So I wanted a motherboard that was gonna be a little bit future-proof and I wasn't immediately going to just block the whole thing out. So the next thing we'll talk about is this case that it's in. You've been seeing B-roll of this case as the video has gone. This is the deep cool case. I believe it's the Matrix 50. Um, and basically it's a super simple case. It's got a couple fans inside. I believe it's got three on the front, one on the back, and it fits my motherboard perfectly. It fits everything really, really nice. It's got the adjustable RGB lights in it, which is super nice. But the big thing is just accessibility. So with having that big glass panel on the side that I can easily just finger screw and pop on and off, it gives me a, a huge, huge chance to swap things out if I need to, or if something goes wrong with the computer, I can take it in and we're not gonna have to unscrew a million different parts. I actually had a computer that I bought after my last one crashed and before I built this new one that I thought was gonna be my permanent computer, but the case was horrible. The motherboard was really, really small and not expandable and it ended up costing more money. So once I went into the shop and kind of worked with them, they made sure that I had the motherboard and even more importantly, the case that was gonna be super accessible for me to start upgrading this as I'm working with that. And that's a big thing for if you're gonna use PCs. If you are gonna go for PC instead of Mac, make sure that it's upgradable and expandable because that's really where you get your money's worth with PC. There's really no point in buying a PC if it's already black out, you should just go ahead and get a Mac if that's the case. All right, so let's talk about price. I had this computer built for me for about 3,200 bucks all in, and that was at a local shop. I bought the graphics card myself and took it in, but other than that, um, 3,200, including that graphics card, is the graphics card, the case, the RAM, the processor, the motherboard, putting it all together. He installed Windows for me, and um, it was really, really cool. I have this kind of help desk on there that if I have any computer issues, I can just log into that, call the shop, he can log in on his end, and he can troubleshoot anything. So finding a local shop that you can go to that's gonna have that support, especially when running off of a computer is your entire job, is huge. So I couldn't recommend that enough if anybody's thinking about doing that. I'm super happy that I did with this build and so far it's running great, but more importantly, I know that that customer service and assistance is gonna be there if I ever need it, which would have been a huge lifesaver in November when my last computer crashed. One thing that I will mention just because I get a lot of questions on it is what screen do I use? So this is a 49 inch ultra wide curved Samsung CHG90 49 inch ultra wide screen. So it's great. It's basically two screens popped into one. It's basically a 1920 by 1080 resolution just doubled in width. Um, so it's really nice. I thought that I was gonna use it as like a split screen with like a mixer over here and a timeline over here, but I've just really fallen in love with having the whole thing. I like feel like I'm in my session. So if anybody's looking for a really good computer, I found that this one doesn't really give me tons of reflections and tons of phase issues with it being curved and it being kind of a narrow footprint. I feel like this is a really, really good option for people who like working with multiple monitors. All right, now that we've kind of talked about my computer setup, let's talk about something that I get a ton of questions on and that is how do I set up my hard drives? So we'll have some B-roll showing so you can kind of see what they look like inside of my computer. But as I said, I do run all of my program files and programs and preferences and everything like that off of the boot up drive, which on a PC is called your local disk. Normally it's the C drive. I just do that. So so everything's kind of in my computer and it can kind of run off of itself. And again, that's that one terabyte Samsung SSD that's just kind of loaded in there. And then other than that, I use a ton of external hard drives. So I have a four terabyte uh, hard drive that is an HDD drive. And the four terabyte drive was kind of my main drive for things like uh, samples, things like libraries, things like uh, session bounces, client bounces, um, if somebody sends me stems. That was basically my big bulk drive that I was keeping all of these really size intensive uh, files on because you can get HDD drives for pretty cheap. I think the four terabyte drive was like maybe 100, 150 bucks. 
and then I've actually upgraded that now so I have a six terabyte HDD that's the glyph drive it's the one that you see in most studios and I'm really really liking that because it's a little bit faster than that four terabyte and it's a little bit bigger so I've kind of started to use that as my new main drive and I've kept the four terabyte plugged in just so I don't have to reroute everything so right now most of my um, like samples most of my big libraries like my contact my omnisphere my east west stuff that's all running from those HDDs and I don't really find a big hang up my computer's pretty fast and it can reach those pretty quick however I have heard some people have issues with loading some of those samples and libraries onto external drives so maybe just keep that in mind but more importantly I'm running all of my sessions off of external SSDs and I'm using these Samsung T5s you can get these on Amazon for like 150 200 bucks I use one terabyte ones because I don't like running with hard drives that are so big that they take forever to fill up that typically gives you more time to accidentally corrupt something or miss files so typically I'll fill up a one terabyte SSD in like six to eight months of projects and then once I fill it up I'll just unplug it pop a label on it with a date and that way if I ever need to go back to it I have it I just like running the external SSDs because they're portable if I need to go to a studio or something like that I can take my HDD and I can take my SSDs and as long as they have my general programs downloaded in that studio I'll be able to run pretty easily because I have the iLock and Cubase as a little dongle as well. So it keeps me pretty portable without being on something like a laptop. And another reason that I split them up like that and have them all external is because if I do have a computer crash like mine in November did, they are all right there where I can just bring them right to a new computer. I don't have any of my directories getting messed up from having to like clone my disk or anything like that. I'm able to just easily unplug them and plug them into the new computer as long as nothing got onto those. So with that said, that's a really, really kind of good way to back up your sessions and things like that is even though I have those sessions going to those one terabyte SSDs, if it's an important session or if it's a, a time where I kind of feel like my computer is going weird on the edge, I'll end up copying those sessions and those session files to different hard drives. That way I know that I have them in multiple places. So that uh, we're kind of transitioning into the backup section here. But that's going to be my first tip for backup is it doesn't hurt to have your files in more than one place. But the most important thing I do for backup is I use a program called Backblaze. And basically it's a website. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it's legitimately only $7 a month and basically what it'll do is take pictures of my hard drive every like 10 minutes and so I've got my local C drive on there I've got my two HDDs on there I've got my two SSDs on there so basically anytime I get a new hard drive I just format it with Backblaze there's a little uh, program that'll download to your computer and then like every 10 minutes it's going to load up new files so as long as I have a computer crash that has been within the last like five or ten minutes everything is on Backblaze so when my last computer crashed what I ended up doing was I didn't know if it had gotten onto my external drives at all. So I just decided to go on my Backblaze account and I ordered a restore. And what they'll do is they can either, you can either download files individually, you can download a zip file of specific files you wanna download again, or you can send them a USB drive that's like up to, I wanna say like maybe 100 gigs or something like that. But more importantly, you can have them actually send you an entire hard drive. I believe it was 180 bucks and that includes them sending the hard drive. And they'll send up to eight terabytes of information. So I had them send literally all of my files formatted to a new hard drive. So once I got a new computer, if I needed to clone those or anything like that, I could just take them the Backblaze drive. And then if you send it back within, I believe it's like 30 days, you actually get your money back. I'm probably just gonna keep mine so I have a backup of everything just in case. But um, it's a really, really good option for $7 a month to know that if I have a session get corrupt, I can just go to Backblaze and re-download it. If I have a hard drive crash, I can just have them send me a new hard drive. To me, that peace of mind is worth infinitely more than $7 a month. And if you're doing client work where you're making money and people are trusting you with their art, I think it's something that every studio should have. So having that backup session on local hard drives where you're kind of cloning things, not a bad idea. Having that in a cloud with something like Backblaze, amazing idea. And then other than that, I'll use things like Dropbox and WeTransfer to actually send clients their files, their stems, their sessions, everything like that. And I'll typically just keep those on that. I think my current Dropbox plan is like, 20 terabytes so I will probably never ever ever run out of that. I like to have everything in multiple sessions just so I have peace of mind because technology is fickle, computers crash all the time. It's one thing to be down for a couple weeks, it's another to lose years and years and years of actual work. So yeah, I think that pretty much does it. That kind of goes over everything that's in my new computer. It goes over why I chose everything, what the kind of important things to keep in mind are. 
I talked a little bit about why I use external hard drives instead of a big internal drive, and then just talked a little bit about my backup system. So if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll probably get back to normal production videos next week, but we just had so many questions on this. And then other than that, if you have any questions about my setup, let me know down below and I'll try to answer whatever I possibly can. Other than that, I think that's gonna do it for the video this week. If you wanna support the channel, head over to makepopmusic.com and check out all of our free and paid content. But other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Stay safe, everybody. Much love, peace.